Hey guys, it's Aaron. We're working our way through the basics of layout and we've gotten to the point where we're gonna draw some shapes. We're gonna draw some shapes using the line tool. We're gonna to use some uh, shape tools. Makes sense, drawing shapes. And look at how to set their properties and how to actually use them in real drawing. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at what's actually turned on here. I do have the colors window turned on and a lot of people ask this. This is just the default color picker for Mac. This isn't something special. Windows is a little bit different. It's just the standard color picker. Nothing fancy. They just look like colored pencils. I don't know why. Uh, the windows I have open right now are layers, pattern fill, and then shape style. So when we come over here and pick a tool to draw with, we're gonna look at this, these right here. So we have a uh, line tool, arc tool, rectangle, circle, and polygon shape. We're also gonna look at the split and join function in just a little bit, but we're gonna start with just a simple pencil tool. So as soon as I click on the pencil tool, I'm gonna to start drawing, and what I'm gonna draw is gonna be controlled by what's in the shape style right now. So right now, if I start drawing a shape, it's gonna draw a polygon with a thin black line around an orange fill because that's what's in my shape style right now. So if I wanna to switch to, this should be a white fill, if I come over here and just change right now, so the way this UI works is I can toggle fill on and off or stroke on and off by just clicking the name, and I change the value, the actual color, by clicking on it. So if I wanna draw a, a blue polygon instead of an orange polygon, I would click on it, then I come over here and select the color I wanna use, and same for stroke. If I wanted to change it to a red stroke or something like that, I could do that. But you'll notice the one I just created is not actually changing because it's not selected right now. What I'm doing right now with nothing selected, I'm setting the properties for the next shape I draw. So as I come in here and draw the next shape, that's the color I'm going to change it to. If I wanna change an existing shape, I wanna change this one to blue as well, I have to pick on it and see how the UI updates and then come over here and change the properties there. All right, pretty simple. I'm just gonna get rid of those. I can uh, select and hit the delete key or I can always use the eraser key and just click and drag across there to get rid of them. All right, let's draw some brand new shapes. I'm gonna to go to my fill. I want these all to be just white shapes. So I'm gonna click on the, the white color. Oops, pick it, white. And then for my stroke, I'm gonna actually just make my stroke like two points, nice big bold stroke there. We'll look at some other, other options here after we get some shapes on here. I'm gonna start with my rectangle. You'll notice that a lot of these arc, rectangle, circle, uh, line all have little flyout buttons there. If you click on that flyout button, you'll actually get the other options Rectangle rounded rectangle bulge rectangle lozenge. So if your throat's hurting you, you can put that one in there I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a regular rectangle click and drag it out All right real simple click click. I do have point snapping turned on so I'm snapping to the grids of my uh, Grid on there the points of my grid. That's what I was trying to say All right, so one thing I want to look at right now is the corner see the corner Right now it's set to this snubbed corner, so it's actually cut off uh, perpendicular to the angle. I can change that to a sharp corner. I have to select it, of course. And I can change it to a sharp corner or a rounded corner, and I can just set those properties. The other options down here, we do have the ability to change to a dash rather than a solid line. Um, and if, if that's selected, I can actually set the scale for that dash too. I'm gonna keep it solid. Uh, I have an option here for ends. So if I just have a standard line, I can actually make the end round or square. And if I do have just a normal end, a standard line, I can actually set arrows on the ends too. So those options are all in there as well. So I'm gonna just go with a normal 90 degree corner. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna next draw a circle in here. I'm just gonna have my circle drawn in and overlapped a little bit. So I just, want, just like that. Just click in the middle and pull it out. Real simple, just like what happens with a regular circle in SketchUp. I'm also gonna draw a polygon. Polygon works a little bit different. Uh, as I'm drawing it, as I'm pulling this out, I can actually tap the uh, arrow keys up and down will increase or decrease the number of sides on there. And spin around, again, it's always gonna snap because that's the way I have it set up right now. All right, so that looks good. So I got three shapes on here. Let's talk a little bit about ordering. So as I have things, anything in SketchUp, they're always in an order. So if I wanted this, this uh, rectangle back to be at the front, I can right click on it and I can hit arrange, bring to front and that'll bring it in front of everything. I can also choose a piece and just say, bring it forward one. So it's only a step forward one. 
As usual, I do recommend that if you're going and drawing shapes, you create your own layer for them and put them on that layer. So I have a shapes layer right here, but you notice I didn't actually put those on there. When I drew these, they were all put on the cover page info. So what do I do? Well, I'm gonna go in and do a drag select. So I drag all these over all three pieces. I'm gonna right click on them, move to layer, and drop them on shapes. As long as it's not a locked layer, you can just drop them right on there. So I'm just put them on shapes. That gives me control over my shapes. And I'm also gonna make that the active layer. So as I draw more shapes, they'll go onto that layer. Again, not a requirement. I don't have to have a shapes layer in order to draw shapes. Just a good way to organize your model. Okay, so this is kind of nice. This is not real easy, shapes, moving them around. Uh, one of the things you might wanna do with this is actually merge shapes together. So we're gonna look at how to do that real quick. Um, basically, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go in and cut the shapes where they intersect and then join the remaining pieces together. I generally find the easiest way to do this is to turn off fills. So I can see the line all the way through and I'm not, it's not covered up by a fill. Not a requirement, again, but that's how I find the easiest to do. I'm gonna go grab the split tool, little, little Zacto knife, and I'm gonna move over the intersection and click right there. I'm gonna move over this other one. I'm just zooming in with the mouse to make it easier to pick then I can actually pick that piece that's going to get cut off and delete it. Delete. See how it broke everything there. So I'm going to do that again. Go here to the intersection. Click. Click. And then select. Delete on the keyboard. Or again, erase. Just drag that across. So now I have outlines. But you'll notice if you look at the corners, they're not quite joined together. So now, real quick, I'm just going to glue them together. I'm going to hit on the join, or it's the glue bottle. And I'm going to pick one of these outlines. Then I'm going to pick on the next outline. And you can tell it's joining because it progressively adds the pieces together. And when I picked on that last piece, it not only joined here, but it joined back to the original piece because they were connected as well. So the cool part is if I come in here and turn the fill on, it's actually go whoop, i got to select it first. Fill. There we go. See how it filled the whole thing with the same color? This is now one big shape. It is on the shapes layer. You can toggle that on and off. So pretty neat, pretty easy. I think a lot of people get hung up on this, wanting this to work differently, want it to be like, work like solid tools or something like that. It's way simpler than that. Just cut it and join it. So how would I use this on a real document? So I'm going to go ahead and jump to my page four. On page four, I just have a section cut. And I want to say in this section cut, I don't want to show the basement. I just want to chop it off at the floor level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pencil tool. I'm going to come in here. And the nice thing is, just like I was snapping to the grids, I can also snap to the model. So if I hover right here, see that I'm picking up that point that was the, uh, the model. So I'm going to come, come around here and I'll actually be able to see that line, that shape, start to fill in as I click through here. That, this piece is actually going to go all the way through to the garage. And I'm going to go past the garage. I want to just go a little bit long. All right. And I'm going to drag it down. I could be a little more precise probably. <laughs> but there we go. So I create a shape that covered up the, uh, uh, the foundation pieces. Um, obviously, it doesn't look very good. It looks like I created a boat or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on it. I'm going to keep the fill white because that's going to cover it up, but I'm going to turn the stroke off. And when I do that, you can see that effectively masks that foundation out of the drawing. So I know it is covering up my grid, but my grid is not going to go to the printer anyhow. So when I actually print this out, PDF or physical copy, it's going to look like just the portion I want to see and not the foundation down below. So that is the basics of using shapes and drawing and setting properties, that sort of thing. Very simple. Uh, a lot of people who get hung up on it want it to be more than it is and make it more complicated than it is. It is a very simple tool and it works very well if you use it the way it's supposed to be used. Uh, so check that out. Give it a try. If you like it, go ahead, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please click on subscribe. We create a lot of videos around here. You'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe to our channel. Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. Most if not all of our content is based on user requests, so people like you putting comments in is how these videos get made. If you like making these videos a lot, 
like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.